Well, good morning. <clears throat> David Coon here with a bit of a croaky uh, throat, I'm afraid, and a bit of a symptom of uh, this colder weather, perhaps. Um, it is Tuesday, the 24th of May, uh, just uh, coming up to 9 a.m. here in the Sydney office, and uh, not a very pretty picture overnight. Um, we have concerns about the uh, uh, debt contagion there, and uh, that's now uh, showing signs of spreading a little bit further afield. Um, in the case of Spain and Italy, uh, although it must be uh, remembered that those two countries' uh, debt situation is uh, uh, less problematic than uh, Portugal, uh, Ireland, and uh, and uh, Greece. Um, <clears throat> so um, yes, our regional Spanish voters turned down uh, reforms that would have uh, likely continued or uh, increased the austerity measures there. And uh, the Standard & Poor's uh, ratings agency uh, has threatened to uh, downgrade uh, Italy's um, credit rating. Uh, Italy currently uh, has a, a debt to GDP of something like 120%. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty significant number and uh, they are saying that it, it's too big to bail, uh, meaning that it, it's just an economy that uh, would be too too substantial to um, really be able to come in with any sort of meaningful uh, bailout package, I think this is uh, the uh, <coughs> measure of that statement. Um, so let's have a look now at exactly what those numbers were. You can see in the Americas, uh, all off uh, 1%, apart from Toronto. I'm not quite sure what uh, picked that up. Uh, and then we move into, uh, into Europe with um, some really quite big moves, 2% plus in the case of the CAC and the DAX. And uh, in the case of Milan, 3.32%. Um, uh, Stockholm also off quite substantially, and the Euro stocks 50, leading 50 stocks, 2.09% uh, to the downside. Uh, yesterday, our close uh, in the region was all pretty much to the downside. <coughs> uh, we were off uh, nearly 90 points on close, 1.88%. Uh, Hang Seng, 2.11%, and the Nikkei. 225 down 1.52%. Uh, we look now to the futures in our region to see what's being suggested as a likely open here. As soon as I can scroll this down, there we go. Uh, the SPI 200 pointing down uh, 29 points to 4,618. Hang Seng, uh, pretty big move there being suggested. Uh, what did we see that was yesterday? That was. Um, 488, so a similar move for the Hang Seng down 490, and the Nikkei 225 down 50 points. Let's move on and have a look at the commodity space. Uh, we are seeing mostly reds in the commodity sector. Uh, West Texas took a quite a big uh, cocaine and quite a lot of pressure last night, uh, almost $2. Uh, that's uh, anticipated to see that demand will come off in the uh, energy space there for, <coughs> for uh, crude oil given these various problems. Uh, natural gas uh, holding up reasonably well there, $4.32, so pretty happy to see that. I suppose, uh, imagine all the natural gas warrant holders would be as well. Uh, then as we move down to our softs, uh, we can see that uh, the big moves down were um, probably uh, coca. Our coffee had a fairly good move up. Sugar, big move down 4.02%. Uh, everything else just slightly to the downside. So uh, we've also got this uh, soybean warrant, um, and that's holding up here pretty well too, uh, down just 0.47%. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> oh dear, sorry about that. <coughs> Goodness, <coughs> winter lurking. Okay, I'm just going to pause that here. <coughs> okay, there. I think I've regained my composure now. Sorry about that. Okay, um, copper back below four dollars. Uh, gold um, seems to be pretty much the only game in down right now, picking up a dollar ninety on top of reasonably good moves over the <coughs> yesterday. Uh, now at 15, 17, 30, so you probably expect to see that fairly well bid. Uh, silver at 
12, moving up 0.62 and 58 percent. Uh, currency is euro buying 1.4050 USD, so that did come under a fair bit of pressure. It seems like it's uh, recovering a little bit there now. Uh, the pound buying 1.6117, the US dollar buying 82.0845 yen, Aussie buying 105. Point, uh, sorry, 105, 15, <clears throat> and the US dollar buying uh, 0 0.9773 loony and uh, 0 0.8837 Swiss francs. So look at the economic calendar here, and I might uh, wrap it up pretty quickly here. Um, okay, let's move that out of the way. And what I've got is the economic calendar here for the week. Um, <coughs> pardon me, filtered. Uh, only to bring up high importance uh, economic events, economic numbers. And we can see this week really has very little to uh, focus investors' intentions, uh, attention on. And uh, <coughs> hence this uh, European situation perhaps is uh, really uh, top and centre at the moment. So uh, we've got some UK GDP figures out uh, for uh, for tomorrow, and then we've got uh, European Central Bank President uh, speaking on the European economy, uh, should be an interesting one, and then later in the week on uh, Thursday, US dollar gross domestic product annualised, uh, expecting around 2.2 figure there, anything less than that would probably have fairly negative connotations, uh, anything higher might be a little bit of a surprise, but wouldn't suspect to be back to the races anytime soon. So just have a quick look here at, to finish off at the economic calendar and just, <coughs> sorry, uh, chart. Uh, we do have the uh, local index. It seems to be in this downward trend of uh, channel here now. And uh, one has to start wondering what might be a realistic target to the downside. 4,500 obviously is uh, where we would be retesting March's low, um, but certainly short term I would have thought 4,600 is uh, feasible today um, and before we find uh, we're touching on that inner downward trend line. And uh, <clears throat> so somewhere in this, this zone here would strike me as a reasonable point to expect that we'll see some uh, sort of turnaround perhaps. Um, one other stock just quickly that I've been looking at uh, is the Incitec Pivot and I uh, know that uh, the colour of the report <coughs> which I read uh, came out uh, pretty bullish on this stock as well. Uh, obviously with uh, grain prices where they are um, it shouldn't present too much of a problem for farmers to be going out and, and ordering up uh, significant quantities of fertiliser and uh, <coughs> that will that seasonal demand will actually kick in in spring, so we're we're looking at this trade, you know, perhaps being uh, in the order of weeks or months rather than days or weeks. But in this market, uh, something fairly uh, conservative perhaps is the way to go. If indeed you should be buying anything at all, rather than simply staying on the sidelines. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, that was that one. Then I did want to just finally finish off with what VectorVest Australia is saying. Um, pretty uh, mildly bearish, but two is look at that ratio of the recommended buys, just 5.7% out of all of the stocks that are covered, and there are 1,616 stocks. 48%, that's nearly half of uh, sell recommends, and 45.9% uh, hold. So. Well, uh, that's the buy sell ratio there that's really uh, pretty poor and uh, really does <coughs> does seem like, a, uh, as they say, the prudent investors should remain on the sidelines. So uh, certainly I'd be thinking that it would be prudent to either tighten the stops on existing positions or simply going to cash altogether. So a couple of things there that consider, depending on the, how long your investment uh, horizon is, I guess, would be the important thing to uh, keep in mind there. Okay, so I'm going to wind up there. 
sorry about all the sneezing and the sniffing. Hopefully uh, next time uh, I won't be doing that quite so much. Uh, in the meantime, stay warm and uh, all the best for the markets. Bye for now.